uh, one of the most terrific videos. You know, we killed about 45 enemy soldiers and over 140 were wounded on that side, Pakistan. There were two units, three Northern Light Infantry and uh, 29 Baluch, one of the most uh, Makar battalions of the Pakistan Army, famous for torturing and killing prisoners and all that. They were bashed, bashed into submission. Went to another village, killed eight. Finally, we went to Gulabgarh village, killed 30, mostly women and children. I told my boys, forget the rest. Go for you. And let it be known, we are coming for you. And when we get you to the first horrible death possible, we burn you to death for what you have done. It's women and children, unarmed. So many. Uh... <laughs> Yes, sir. So, uh, I am uh, Lieutenant Commander Vijay Nair, sir, and uh, I am the host for this particular talk show. Sir. Hi, Vijay. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, sir. And before Happy we talk, Mother sir, Sakranti, I am mean, everything. Ha, tell me. I, I must admit, sir, when I was in Forge, I am a big fan of you, sir. Big, big Thank fan you. of you, sir. Thank you, Vijay. And I, 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 uh, most of us follow your ideology, sir. Hardcore, ham jo desh ke prati ulta bolte hain, ham uska uske tangri tod dete hain, sir. <laughs> good, good, good. Good. Ye rakte hain, sir. Good. So, sir, so with me is lot of lot lot of youngsters across India, sir. Most of them are aspiring to join the armed forces. Excellent. And I mean, sir, ko bolta hu ki forge matlab sir hai. Sir, if agar army aap bolte ho, to sir is the army, you know, like. So sweet. Yes, so this is what uh, Major General uh, G D Bakshi, sir. Uh, Sena Medal and uh, VSM, sir, have served for uh, 37 years and four years of his training started. Uh, and and आप सबको जानकर ये होगा कि sir की पहली posting after IME was a war posting, you know that was that was this. So sir, uh, uh, I know about uh, your brother, sir, Captain sir, uh, who uh, so so what was your motivation to join the armed forces, sir? Look, <clears throat> I'll be straightforward. When I was in the 7th, 8th classes, we had a series of commando comics. And I used to read those commando comics, World War I, World War II, Army, Navy, Air Force, Action. And I was, you know, increasingly getting uh, inclined towards the armed forces, but I hadn't quite made up my mind. You know, I was a very studious kind of a guy. I spent, I was good in academics and I spent most of my time in the library. And uh, therefore, I was, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, people thought not really the type who joins the forge, not a sportsman, not an outgoing cap, quite uh, wrapped up with my books, not very concerned about my appearance, ink all over my clothes and all that. But it was when my brother was killed in action in the 1965 war, that came as a big, big jolt. And a big deciding factor. My brother's body was blasted to bits by a mine, M16 jumping mine, you know, which really makes a mess of your body. And we didn't even get the body home. We were just 23 years old, tall, strapping, handsome uh, young man with a very good cricketer, you know, very popular with the, with the kids and all that. And uh, we didn't even get his body home. They did the cremation. They collected the body had been blasted to pieces. So they collected those pieces, did the did the das and scar, and they just sent us that copper urn containing his ashes. Now that we had to immerse them in the Narmada, since I was the next brother, I had to hold it in my hand right throughout. And uh, it was a very traumatic experience. And while we were immersing the ashes in the Narmada, I, it was suddenly very crystal clear to me where my path lay. My path lay to the armed forces and that's where I had to go. So, September 65, he was killed in action, 22 September 1965. And uh, I had immediately after that, you know, the forms had been filled. I had filled the forms for the NDA written exam. And uh, I had to go to Delhi, you know, and uh, quite obviously there was a storm in the house and my father was, uh, you know, very upset. My chachas, tayas, they all told my dad, what do you want to save money on a college education for your kid? Can't you give it to him? You lost one boy. Why are you sending the next? And uh, to send sons to die. 
don't other families have a duty to etc 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 anyway i went quietly did my written exam you know and uh, then from there uh, the exam results came out next year march 1966 and uh, then i had to go for the interview interview was in uh, ssb mysore with the with the with the medical at uh, you know school of aviation medicine sam at bangalore bangalore now and this was the first time i was going south of the india you know it was quite an adventure going all that long train journey all alone by myself you know <laughs> and uh, i remember on those uh, third class compartments we went sitting on the floor because uh, all overcrowded etc etc anyway i did my ssb i did my uh, medical and uh, my dad was very sure that i wouldn't make it because he said you are not the army type you know you are not the extrovert type you are not this type etc etc so you will not make it but anyway let it be he was very keen that i should do the ias so he said let it be a trial run you will gain experience for your ias exam you know so i went and when the results came believe you me i was number 2 in the all india merit list second in the all india merit list and that shook everybody up people were astonished you know and so the person most astonished was my dad so then i uh, i you know then i told him to look as for your promise you had said if i make it i can go so quite obviously then he was very reluctant very reluctantly he agreed and then from the nda came the indemnity bond you know when you go to the nda you are mom and dad have to dad has to sign the indemnity bond that if your son gets killed wounded breaks his bones during training you will not claim any compensation from the army etc at that he flew into a rage he said i am not signing this bond they have the cheek the nerve to ask me to do this after i have lost my son elder boy etc etc and all that so one day two day three day i kept waiting for him to sign and he wouldn't sign and uh, then i panicked because the academy started and 10 days after the academy started you know uh, more or less then i said that this is too much so you know we used to stay in that old the colonial style bungalows so i called the rickshaw loaded my trunk which had already been packed 10 days ago and i said dad i am going he said where are you going i said i am going to the nda so he thought i was bluffing but i actually got into the rickshaw and i said look i have got the you don't have to give me any money i have got the i have got the warrants the nda had already sent the warrants so i said i am going to go and join the nda so he you know the rickshaw went till the gate he followed then he stopped that rickshaw and he said okay now i am quite clear that you are determined to go and this seems to be your destiny but don't fight from home and go i'll i'll drop you off tomorrow so next day very quietly you know he dropped me off we had that old austin 8 car you know <laughs> jolting jalopy and uh, believe you me when we were going there was a tire burst and he had to change the tire he said you sure you want to go this is not a good sign i said no 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 dad don't worry about the signs <laughs> we will do a bit so so then and we reached the station in time i caught the train and that is how my journey into the armed forces started uh, 10 days late into the nda you can imagine what i had to go through exactly <laughs> I, you know by the time my friends had all learned the names of all the seniors and when you know i had in my smartest dress i reached the nda i saw the sudan block my god what a dream come true it was and it's so beautiful so imposing so marvelous you know and uh, there were two three other late comers like me you know uh, who had done very badly they were at the tail end and because some people had dropped out they were coming so we were there so i reached the the you know the steps of the sudan block and that is where the taxi dropped us so we took off our trunks and etc and all that and then you know i i wasn't aware that as cadet you can't go up the central steps of the sudan block you know correct right. and uh, i started going up who the hell you what was what and there was subedar major kanchi ram what That's a right. legendary figure 6 foot 3 inches tall you know he was standing there so he saw a new cadet coming in 
all in civvies with my <laughs> tai shai and all that. So he looked at me and he smiled. He said, Saab, aap abhi yaha se nahi aa sakte. Aapko pehle afsar banna hooga idhar se aane ke liye. Chalo, lekin ab aap aa gaye ho, aap jante nahi. Chalo, jau. <laughs> Go inside. <laughs> so that was my introduction to the army. Yeah, I was very happy to go back to the NDA as a major general and then climb up the same steps. <laughs> you know, it felt good. I remembered what the Subhadar Major had said. That, Saab, aapko officer banna padega, phir aap in steps se aa sakte ho. So, I said, well, I, I am now an officer and a major general, two-star <laughs> general. So, I can go up these central staircase. <laughs> Small little things stick in your memory, you see. Right, sir. So, so uh, you, were, you, you were in which squadron, sir? I, I was uh, initially in Charlie and then I went to India squadron. Okay, India. okay, sir. And so, I passed out from India squadron. It was uh, a memorable years in the NDA. You know, so, and uh, when we were in the NDA, I want to share some memories with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, that was the time, uh, the first principal of the NDA was Mr. J.T.M. Gibson. Okay. He was a Britisher. And Britishers, you know, they they don't, uh, they don't penny, uh, pinch pennies when they want quality. So, he had asked uh, people, ki, what are the pays in the best schools and colleges of India for the teacher? They said, it is so much. They said, triple it. Triple it. So, they got an NDA allowance which was equal to their pay, you know. And this way, he got the best talent from all over India into the NDA. The best talent, creme de la cream of the academic institution from all over India came and joined as instructors and professors and assistant professors in the NDA. And there were people who were Oxford Blues in boxing, Mr. Uh, you know, uh, Dhotiwala and the others. There was Oxford Blue in uh, diving. Mr. Kundeep saying, you know, uh, Nani, uh, you know, there were institutions in themselves. And frankly, one of the best things I liked about the NDA was these top level instructors. It's a very sad fact that the NDA was then destroyed by the bureaucracy. You know, they, they cut their pay. They said, you are not, uh, you know, university grants commission pays will be made applicable to you, this, that and the rest. And today, I am very sorry to say, it is pathetic. NDA is getting instructors who are hired by the clock hour, rejects of the Pune University, etc. I mean, NDA has passed through some bad times because of that. But in my time, it was wonderful. You know, I still remember the way was Mr. Raina, my English professor. And he was very short-tempered, very hot-headed, and he used to blast us and, you know, this thing and that. So, I, on one Sunday, I wrote a poem, you know, English poem. And then very shyly, I went to him, you know, when I was showing my homework and all that. So, I said, sir, I, I wrote a poem. Can I show it to you? So, I was very scared that he would lose his temper, fly off the handle and his standard punishment was, we used to, English classes were on the third floor, top floor. Mm -hmm. He would throw the bloody copy if you didn't have done badly or not done your work properly, throw the copy out of the window and say, go and get it. So you had to run down three steps of stairs, go pick your bloody copy, come back running, sweating and show it to him, yes sir, I got my copy, you know. So I thought he would fling my copy out of the window. But the old man looked at it, he read it, he took off his spectacles, he polished them, he says, jolly good, jolly good. You come over home this Saturday. Today oh. is a Saturday. He says, come over home this Saturday. You know? Now, for a cadet to get invited to a instructor's house was a hell of a great thing, you know. So, I went to his house on Saturday, very nice B3 area, you, you also know the NDA. So, I went there and uh, there were cakes and there were pastries and sandwiches, you know, a big treat for an NDA kid. So he said, come son. And he made me sit down and listen to Beethoven's fifth sonata. Oh. You know, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, classical music. He says, I want you to listen to classical music so that you get the rhythm. Poetry comes with rhythm, right? I want you to listen to the best music possible, classical. So that you pick up that rhythm because you have that rhythm in you. And then after that was over, 
he took out his uh, translation of Kashmiri poems which he had done for UNESCO uh, and he read them out to me one by one, you know, in the original Kashmiri that he would translate. It was a wonderful experience. Then he made me the cadet editor of the NDA in my third term. Normally oh. a BCC, B ACA or somebody like that is made the cadet editor. It is part of his getting the gold medal, etc. But he made me and for three terms I was the editor of the NDA journal. You know, that was Mr. Raina because he thought I was good. It's as simple as that. You know, I didn't know him from Adam. He didn't know me from Adam, but he thought I was good. So he made me the editor. And uh, these are some of the great vigilance of our training. The, the camaraderie that you develop in the NDA, the bonding that you develop in the NDA is amazing. I mean, uh, you know, even now when I think of some of my friends from the NDA, and they were great personalities. Those days, the NDA used to get the cadets. Mostly, they were officers, kids and all that. And they used to come from the uh, top schools. Lawrence School, Salar, Lawrence Lovedale, St. Paul, Darjeeling, St. Columbus, etc., etc., etc. Some of the top schools of the NDA, the cadets were there. They were good sportsmen, good boxers, good this, good that. My God, it was... So such a pleasure to be in the NDA. I hope it is the same for them now. But when I go up there, I find the NDA is not the same NDA. It has, uh, you know, that touch of class. Or, or I suppose every course feels like that. Yeah, like when we were there, it was we were great. And these these very chap there from Tanya Putri <laughs> Part Shala, and they are so weak and they are so <laughs> they, are, they are so namby pamby. Though, of course, the India is getting tougher and tougher, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. The boys are very tough. Uh, the physical standards have been raised much higher. And they are living up to those physical standards. Because I remember one of the uh, NDA commandants was my course mate, Randhawa, Air Marshal yes. Randhawa. You know, and he was a legendary, as a, as a commandant, he used to run cross country with the cadets and beat most of them. <laughs> so, quite obviously, you know, he made them swim across the bloody Paikara Lake and all that, you know. So, a very tough guy. So, everybody adds to the NDA. But I am exactly, talking sir. of the NDA of my time with a very, you know, the, sir, the as, best as, time as, of my life. As a cadet uh, in NDA and IMA, maybe one incident where you would remember as a GC, uh, you know, where... Uh, in, some funny, funny things sir, other than the, uh, you know, the <laughs> one you narrated. Because all of us have story. All of us have a story. So, you uh, know, my story is unique. When I reached the NDA, uh, for the IMA after the NDA, um, uh, you know, uh, okay, we'll tell you that story first of the NDA. Since, uh, you are an ex-NDA, is it? I'm an ex INA, sir. Indian okay. Legal Academy, sir. Okay. All right, all right. You know, NDA, as I told you, has that Sudan law. You know? Admiral Gorshkov, the five star admiral of the Soviet Navy, you know, one of the yes. greatest admirals in world history, he was to come to the NDA, right? And uh, the commandant was uh, Rear Admiral Robin Batra from the Navy. Great man, and uh, quite obviously, you know, all the naval top brass, all the army commander, etc., they were all going to accompany that admiral because those days the Soviet Union was our best friend, you know, and the bulk of our weapons were coming from the Soviet Union the high tech weapons, tanks, warships, destroyers, Rajput, Rana, you know, missile boats, etc. So, I mean, he went into overdrive. The academy, we spent hours and hours mentioned polishing our floors and this and shining up this and shining up that, etc., etc. And we were miserable because there were cabin covered after cabin covered after cabin covered. And what any cadet hates the most, whether in India, IMA or NMA, <laughs> you know, is, is these bloody cabin covers cabin and <laughs> uh, all these. You can't sleep in your bloody bed. You have to make it. The bed has to be made, you sleep on the bloody floor. So, it wasn't a very happy time. So, we were all pretty upset with that, you know. Then suddenly on one of the Saturdays, and all the mischief starts on Saturdays, you know, ends on a Sunday. So, we saw a movie called That Girl from Sahiti. Okay. So, here in that movie, a girl from Sahiti goes to uh, Oxford. 
you know and in the oxford they have a tradition of protest when the students are unhappy with the faculty one of the daring ones you know at night he climbs the oxford steeple tower and he puts some dirty thing up there as a symbol like a flag as a symbol of protest from the student against the faculty you know so this girl from tahiti she used to climb the coconut trees so she was told are you are so good at climbing so she went up there and she hung an old bra up on the top of the <laughs> the steeple tower in oxford university some of us thought it's a damn good idea yeah so <laughs> let's <laughs> let's give it back to robin batra for it yeah and uh, three of us i will not take their name because some of them reached very senior ranks later <laughs> you know on sunday night monday goshkov was to come on sunday night you know they quietly slipped out of their cabins they had an rv they went to the sudan block they dodged the guards there are a lot of dsc guards etc there yes yes they went they climbed up to the roof of the sudan block and then their dome is 120 feet high and it has got those rungs by which there is a lighting conductor on top correct correct lighting conductor is also about 6 to 8 feet high you know yes. so they climbed on top the three of them can you imagine what a feat of courage there is exactly. a tiled roof on the sudan block and on top of that is that uh, you know the <laughs> the the dome so they climbed yes. up to that dome using their drums one by one they all three reached on top there is hardly about i think 4 feet of space there on top and then they pulled down that lighting conductor they had an old riding pith hat you know what you use for uh, equi- equestrian training yes, horse yes. riding Yes. all dirty you know with spots of water etc all over you know because it had been lying at the end of a kit bag for very long they took that dirty filthy pith hat and they stuck it on the spikes of the lighting conductor <laughs> okay and uh, they left it there came quietly back to their cabins climbed in via the windows and went to sleep next morning you know there was a cavalcade of cars huge black bloody sedans you know the the ones in which they talk <laughs> the five star admiral korskov what a convoy it was you know cavalcade admiral and southern army commander chief of staff this that hey who the whole bloody convoy was coming along with the uh, with general, uh, with uh, admiral korskov five star admiral of the uh, soviet navy so the convoy reached the sudan block those same famous steps which i was not supposed to climb <laughs> you know <laughs> and he received the admiral there and uh, poor chap he had rehearsed a speech and rehearsed a talk on what to tell the uh, admiral goskov you know because he was very nervous <laughs> you can imagine a uh, five star admiral so he told him sir this is the sudan block the government of sudan had given 80000 pound etc etc the the general introduction see sir this is the only uh, you know building with those uh, tiled roof but a dome on top you know it's very unique design masquerade has did it did that you know. suddenly admiral goskov looked up <laughs> and what did he see he saw the dirty bloody pith hat on top of the <laughs> on top of the 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 sudan block lighting conductor and uh, when the admiral looked up our admiral the commandant he almost fainted poor chap you know with shock because there was there was that bloody pith hat and he realized what had happened and he did not know what to say he got very flustered so he said sir 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 that's not a, a hat sir. that's a, that's a bird <laughs> now the russian admiral you know russians don't have a sense of humor they do, they, they always suspect that you are trying to laugh at them or something you know uh, so the admiral turned to his interpreter and said that 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 something in russian you know and the interpreter turned to the commandant and he said the admiral says he is 70 years old but he has been on sea since he was 16 and he may be wearing specs uh, but his eyes can pick up everything on the sea you know that is not a bird <laughs> so it was a rather bad start for the 
ADA inspection or the ADA visit and poor Admiral Batra was stammering and then you know the southern army commander he said oh let me intervene so he said sir sir we will show you the marble and oh umko andar le gaya yes sir you are right sir it is not a bird <laughs> he took him in right <laughs> so when the Admiral left two days later he spent two days in the ADA and when he went uh, two days later the whole bloody academy was called out into the drill square at night because so he had left after dinner <laughs> And the commandant was there and all of us were there and he said, hold up, who did it, who did it? Now, who the hell owns up in the academy? So, nobody owned up and we were run out the whole night through in there and then sent on single hikes, you know, that is the one of the toughest punishments of the ADA to make you climb the single fort on a Sunday. <laughs> but we did that, but nobody owned up until now only... I and a few people know who the three people <laughs> were. But that is NDA for you. That is NDA. Full of fun, full of the adventurous spirit, full of daring, daring grow. And enjoy a good laugh. You see, have a sense of humor. Because if you don't have a sense of humor, you won't lost long in the army, navy, or the air force. Because life is so tough that without humor, we would be we would be in trouble. We would be in trouble. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so that is one of the this is one of the most endearing stories of the NDA, and it shows you the spirit of the cadets. Wait, wait, wait. And how about IMS? You said something unique happened in. IMS. Oh well, that one is even naughtier. So I try and avoid telling that story. But now that you ask me, you see, when I was I reached the IMA. You know, the, we decided to have a squadron get together, India squadron get together in the IMA. Yeah. So, on a Saturday night, you know, we all pulled together our, uh, you know, snacks and eats, and there used to be magnolas or mangolas and some, you know, moofali, <laughs> things like that. A great treat for the NDA, for the IMA. And we were to get together in one of the companies, which was, uh, you know, on the FRI block. And uh, there, there was a BCA. He was from, uh, he was a very sincere person, but he was from the ranks and he had come up and he was really sorting that uh, company out, that battalion out, rather, Charlie Battalion. So, on a Saturday when they had a holiday, he decided to hold a muster fall in and started front rolls and back rolls and hunching and all over. So, people were very upset, what the hell. So, one of the JUOs of that company, he went to him and said, Yeah, we had planned an NDA get together of our India squadron. So, please let those boys know. He said, You shut up and you also put on a heckle order and you you also come here. You also join. You bloody fought some You know, in the uh, in NDA, the tradition is you don't finger your course mate. But in IMA, it changes. Your course mate, if he's an appointment, he can, he can you know, oh, go bury hell, slam into you. So he said, all of you also come here, you fought some you know. So they were very angry. So they came back and they said, yeah, this party, he is screwed. Let's screw him back. So they <laughs> all looked at me. He said, look, you are from another battalion. He doesn't know you. So you pretend to be the duty officer. You go and finger this guy. I said, they say, yeah, you are very You know, battalion cadet adjutant. Hello, think when you are a gentleman cadet or a cadet. I said, no, no, yeah, you get me in trouble and all that. So, there was my good friend, Dangwal, now a brigadier, retired as a brigadier, great funga taker. He said, GD, you lack the guts. Mm -hmm. uh, GD, you lack the guts, you are chicken. <laughs> so I said, what? Say that again. He said, you lack the guts to do it. I said, okay. So, I borrowed a very nice broad-shouldered coat of that JUO, he was also a huge guy, he later retired as a three-star general and I put on my, uh, you know, scarf, shop, etc. And then I came out of the cabin and I started shouting, Who is that bloody idiot with the lights on? So the JUO came out, Sir, 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 JUO, JP Singh, Sir. Now, he was figuring the junior courses on the other side, That's behind right. that block, you know. And That's suddenly right. he heard a big shout, Who is that idiot with the lights on? And he got scared, it was a duty officer. Who is that idiot taking a fall in there? Sir, that's the BCA, sir. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> so, so, he ran, you know, to the BCA and he said, you know, the duty officer is there, he is calling you. <laughs> now, now, he was supposed to take permission if he wanted to hold a fall in after lights out. He hadn't done that. And poor fellow, he said, oh my God, here go my tab, you know. So, he came running. 
and now my heart was pounding in my <laughs> chest. He has said, I GD, you fool, you've done yourself in. This course hasn't started, you'll get kicked out or relegated for this and what. But, you know, he came and he was wearing his cross belt and this thing, but he had not, he was not wearing his beret. So, he came, he put the cane under his arm and he saluted me very. <laughs> so, the moment I saw him, saw him saluting without the beret, so I knew that he was also very frightened. So, I lambed into him and I, who the hell taught you to salute without a beret? Who made you a BTA? I fired the hell out of him. You know, and I go and bloody break that damn Call it immediately. So he said, no, no. He, he said, yes, sir, break off, break off. He said, double, you double. <laughs> and in the meantime, I vanished back into the JU's cabin. So we had gotten away with this. So, you know, I got uh, 21 days restriction for it because fortunately <laughs> my battalion commander had a sense of humor. <laughs> and when I was marched up to him, he said, why did you impersonate an officer and why did you do it? I told him, sir, it was just meant to be a joke. <laughs> so he smiled, but he's, he just put his hand over his face to hide that smile, and he got me twenty. Gave me, left me off with twenty-one days restriction. You know, <laughs> so that was the NDA and the IMA that we knew. Great place, great fun, great sense of humor, great spirit, and broad-minded, broad-minded. Me too. You know, that's what it was, and that's how the army, navy, the air force keep going because of the strength of these traditions. When he's born, you know, that is what no other profession can do. Very true, sir. No other profession, not the IAS, not the IPS, not any other job, no scientist, no doctor can have a life like this. So full of fun and laughter and joy and toughness and a code of ethics, a code of honor. Very true. That is what then. Then, sir, uh, you you and your course uh, directly went to war. Like yeah. uh, you yeah. were back yeah. to Assam. Uh, what was that, sir? What was that? Show? That was. You see, this was uh, when we entered the IMA. It was the year of the Lord, 1971. In March 1971, you know there was a crackdown by Pakistan in now Bangladesh, and they murdered so many. You know, killed genocide took place. In fact, 3 million Bengalis were killed, 1 million Bengali women were raped, 10 million driven out as refugees. So, we knew that a war was on the, car, uh, on the horizon. And in October, we were to pass out on 14th of December, 1971. In October, the adjutant, you know, got the whole course assembled at the IMA drill square. He came on his white charger, the white horse that the adjutant rides in the NDA. And he says, gentlemen, you guys have done very well in training. We are very happy with your training. And uh, you guys are going to be commissioned a month before time. 14th of November is your commissioning date now. So we were all very happy. Yeah, you buggers, you've gotten one year, you know, service more <laughs> than, than you would have on a one year of senior, one month of seniority, you know. So we all cheered and clapped. And the adjutant turned to the assistant adjutant and he said, poor chaps, they don't know what they are in for. He mm -hmm. said, why, sir? He said, you know, these blighters, these blokes, by the time they will get their commission and they will join their units, the units will already be in action. They wouldn't know the men, the men wouldn't know them. And yet they will go charging because they are young blood, because they want to prove themselves, they want to show how good they are. And a lot of them will get killed and shot up. It is sad. His words were absolutely right. We were commissioned 14th of December 1971 and uh, we got 10 days leave to see Mama Papa and then we, we uh, were sent straight, put into the train, landed at Siliguri and the very first night of the war, you know, we were in action. The very first night of service, we were in action. A number of my friends got killed the very first night of service. A number of them got shot up, got wounded, some lost their legs, some lost their arms. We suffered heavily. We suffered heavily. But he is so proud that we were at the cutting edge when India won the greatest military victory in the last 2000 years. Right? We, 13 days we cut Pakistan in two, broke Pakistan in two. We marched 550 kilometers from three sides into 
Bangladesh captured the capital city of Dhaka, overthrew the regime and created a new nation state to the force of arms, we change the map of the world. They say you can't change your neighbor, you can change the maps. And we change the map of the world by creating a new country, by breaking Pakistan into two pieces. You know, 93,000 prisoners of war. There's an amazing feeling, that feeling of victory. Nothing, nothing can matter. Niazi, Lieutenant General Amir Akbar Abdullah Khan Niazi, Hilal e Jurrat Sitara e Pakistan. I mean, I've seen him as a prisoner of war. And he was kept in my hometown of Jabalpur, you know, where all the top commanders of the Pakistan Army, Navy, Air Force were captured and kept there. It was a magnificent victory. And our course took part at the cutting edge of this uh, battle. And I'm very proud to say I have, amongst my course mates, I can count one who got the Paramvir Chakra, second Lieutenant Arun Khetrapal, 21 years of age, he got the Paramvir Chakra posthumously, 17 Puna horse, Fakre Hind. And then later, as a Kalnan, my second course mate got the Ashok Chakra. Colonel N.J.C. Nair, great boxer, terrific guy. He got the Ashok Chakra, Kirti Chakra. That means he is PVC, MVC equivalent. This is one of the highest decorated officers of the army. And therefore, we are so proud that in the NDA, we are the one course that has two of the highest awards. Paramvit Chakra, Ashok Chakra. Right. No other course can claim that. We did very well as a batch. So many of us, one became the chief of the Air Force, Charlie Brown. He became the Air Chief. And a uh, number of, uh, two, uh, two of them in the Army became Army Commanders. And uh, one became uh, Army Commander equivalent in the Air Force. So, uh, one became a Rear Admiral, uh, Mali in the Navy. And uh, we had so many Army did specifically very well because we are the guys who were at the cutting edge of that war. So, so many three-star generals, so many two-star generals, you can feel very proud. Look yeah. back with pride and satisfaction. Great. Sir, so, Rear, Rear Admiral H.S. Mani is your course mate, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, sir. I had uh, the privilege of serving with him, sir, when yeah. I was learning. <laughs> Great chap. <laughs> Great chap. Yeah. So, how was, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, Lieutenant Arun Ketarpal, all of us know. So, how how a person he was, sir? because few of my uh, students here, they had they are asking me to ask you that, how he was as a person, because probably we heard uh, so much about him, you know, such a brave act. And... You know, Arun became the iconic face of the 1971 war. He was the face by which everybody recognized, you know, the armed forces in that war. He was 21 years of age when he died. He was a tall, he was six foot one. One of the handsomest chaps in the course. One of the handsomest chaps in the course, a good rider, a good swimmer, water polo player. He used to play the violin, very talented. He was the son of a brigadier, brigadier Khetrapal of the engineers. Correct. And came from a proud family, his grandfather, great-grandfather had all fought World War I, World War II, etc. Very, very proud lineage. And a gentleman, soft-spoken, this thing, but not naughty. You know, he went on a Ghana raid or somewhere and he got detabbed as an HO. He was a senior under officer, you know, it's like the squadron cadet captain, you know, and uh, he got detabbed. And then I think in the IMA he got detapped again, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure. But uh, he, he, he was very quiet. He didn't look the naughty sort, but he had that impishness in him, you know. So he joined the Unit 17 Puna Horse as one of our best tank regiments. And it is called Fakre Hind by Pakistan. Yes. Fakre Hind means the pride of India. So, if the enemy calls you the pride of India, that means you have to be really, really good. You have to be really good. And that regiment was good. And 71 war, it was commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Hanut Singh, MVC, yes. later Lieutenant General Hanut Singh, one of the greatest armored corps officers, you know. 
Anup Singh was a legend. And uh, the war was about to start, like I told you. He had to go for his bios course. That bios course got cancelled. He had to come back without doing his course. And uh, so he stopped. There was a, a few hours halt of the train at Delhi. And then the train had to go straight to the Punjab border. So uh, he got off the, this thing. He, he has a house. His house, uh, mom dad's house is in Delhi. So he went home running quickly. He said, I apna leke aata hu. And he got his golf set. And he got his uh, winter patrol, you know, the best uniform. So people asked him, what the hell are you getting this for, you idiot? You are going to war. He said, no, no. Once we win the war and we capture Lahore, I am sure there will be a dinner night in Lahore and I will wear this there and we will play golf on their golf course. You know, so, oh. you know, he, he was that kind of a guy, you know. So when he joined the unit, of course, he was, uh, the CEO called him. As a look, the tradition is, you first go stay for a month in the men's barracks. You live with the men, eat, drink, sleep with the men, so that you learn their way. You learn what they go through. So that you know when you give any order, you know what effect it will have on the boys. So you will go there, then you will qualify yourself as a tank driver, then as a tank gunner, then as a single operator in the tank. I want you to go up the chain, learn and earn the respect of the boys by being with them and being better than them. Show them that you are better professionally. You can fire more rounds in a minute than they can. You can drive better with your eyes shut if you have to, etc., etc. That is what he told them. So he got set to with a will, you know, to do that. And then they got orders to, the war had started. 3rd December, the Pakistanis attacked our airfield. Next day, we were in full-scale offensive mode because we were ready on the starter block. The CO then decided, the commandant uh, of the regiment, the Armored Corps regiment, he is called commandant, he decided, he says, look, uh, Arun, you haven't done the bios course. I will not take you to the battlefield. I can't do that. It's unfair on you. So you will stay at the rear. So he was shocked. I mean, what a big war and I stay at the rear. So, he was given the orders by the 2IC, you are not going, you look after the rear, you take charge of the rear, you know. So, Arun was shocked. He went to meet, by the time they had reached the concentration area for the war, and the commandant was staying in his caravan. Now, Rao Raja Hanut Singh used to meditate for hours, you know. So he was doing his meditation, he went to the, the, the commandant's caravan to meet him. So the Sahayak told him, no, sir, you can't go. He's doing meditation. You know? So he says, he said, I'll wait. So he put a chair for him outside. He sat down and he waited. And then when the commandant got up from his meditation, the sentry told him, sir, there is Lieutenant Saab Bille Aya here. He said, Chik, I come in. So he said, yes, Arun, what brings you here and all that? He said, sir, you don't trust me. Straight point blank question to his commandant. I have trained in the Pune horse, sir. I have trained with the boys. I am as good to fight as anybody. If you leave me out of this war, sir, what face will I show to my men? They will all laugh at me all my service through that I was the guy who was left out of Don't do this to me, sir. Please, trust me. I will not let you down. So the commandant quite obviously was deeply moved. He says, okay, okay, son, I see your spirit. I like your spirit. Come along. As simple as that, he told me. But yet he told the two IC, he said, you know, Arun was here. He wants to go join the fighting and all that, sir. But he's not trained. I, I don't feel up to it, but I've told him, yes. So put the best JCO on his stand. He says, Prakat Singh, sir, he's our oldest in there. So, so let him take care of him. So hot blood, hai, young blood. Hai. I don't want anything to happen to him. You know? So because he had that premonition. He covered on. So they went to the war. They went to Basantar. The infantry attacked across the Basantar river. And then they formed bridgeheads. Right? They formed bridgeheads there. And then the Pakistani armored brigade, 8th independent armored brigade was ordered to counter attack and destroy the bridge. 
Now our, uh, you know, there was a huge minefield ahead of that river, and our trawl tanks were trying to clear the minefield, and it was the enemy started shelling, so the minefield uh, operations were disrupted, you know, and there was no lane, safe lane for the tanks to go through that minefield. So the infantry, they, I mean, they were naturally in a panic. A hundred bloody tanks from the Pakistanis were getting together to launch an attack and wipe out these bridges. So General Hanu Singh decided. Mine field safe lane or no safe lane, I am going. So he decided to bash through. Bash through means the commandant puts his tanks up front, they go in a single file, any tank that blows up, they bypass him and keep going. So this way you can take heavy casualties, but you will finally get through. Fortunately for them, no tank was blasted and they got through that mine field safely. Next day, a jeep got blown up on the same lane. So Look at the luck. So they entered the bridgehead just in time, and that is the time the counter attack was starting. The troop in which uh, Arun was there was led by Captain Malhotra. So that troop had all three officers Lieutenant Lawat, Lieutenant, Second Lieutenant Arun Khedrapal, and Captain Malhotra as the troop commander. They were sent to the most vulnerable flank on the left, and the main attack came there. Oh. You know, the 13th Lancers of Pakistan, one of their best outfits, they attacked there, you know. And uh, so Arun was there and the tank of uh, Malhotra got hit, caught fire. The tank of Alawat caught fire. They all had to pull back to put out their fire. And only tank left was Arun Khedrapal. He shot one enemy tank, then he shot the second, then he shot the third. Then his tank got hit and caught fire, right. And he was wounded. You know, there was these uh, shrapnel hit his uh, head and the blood was flowing into his eyes, etc. But he continued to fire. He continued to fire. Uh, Malotra ordered him, Arun, your tank is on fire. Any time the ammunition inside will go off. And you can imagine what happens inside a turret. If 40 rounds go off, 105 millimeter gun, you know. So he says, Arun, your tank is on fire. Evacuate tank. Withdraw immediately. So he said, Sir, my gun is still firing. And as the blood was streaming into his eyes, he remembered his school motto. He was from Lawrence School, Sanar. And you know what is the motto of the school? Never give in. So somehow it came back to him and he said, I am not abandoning tank. He said, Sir, my gun is still firing. I will get these bastards. He hit one more Pakistani tank, the fourth. And then he destroyed the fifth pattern tank. And that is the time the squadron, enemy squadron, which was attacking, just one tank was left in the squadron. Some, uh, you know, Malotra had destroyed, some Alawat had destroyed, and five had been destroyed by uh, Arun himself. And the only chap who was left was the enemy squadron commander, Major Brigadier Khwaja Ahmad. You know, so they were both at 50 meters now. They both opened fire because of the blood streaming in his face. Arun missed and uh, uh, Arun missed and uh, he got hit and he died on the spot. So he was awarded the Parambit Chakra posthumously. This is what our batchmates were made of. And they proved themselves on the battlefield. They proved them. Yeah. Uh, so, sir. Um, during uh, your later appointments, you are known as to be a person like uh, in the in the armed forces. Wherein when you went to your Kashmir tenure, you were very successful in maintaining the peace and especially your Kistewar tenure, sir. So, uh, if you would like to tell us about that, sir. Look, I'll I'll just be brief because you know one can go on and on about your military career, and it is. Uh, uh, it is wrong to start an old soldier on his tails because old soldier's <laughs> tails never end. <laughs> there are so many of them. But I fortunately, it just so happens that I am one of the most combat experienced officers, even in my batch of veterans, combat veterans. I commanded my company as a major in Punjab, counter-terrorist operation. Toughest time. And I commanded a Sikh company, 85 to 87 in the Punjab. And you know what happened in 84. So what a tough assignment it was. But we did very well there, etc. Thanks to my boys who were true to their salt. 
and i never got more loyalty from any other set of boys than these khalsa of delta company four jack rifles and then i went on to command my battalion in kargil under intense conventional operations artillery gun firing away regiment of artillery you know uh, battery of 120 mm heavy mortars five platoons of of 81 mm mortars and air defense guns anti tank guns everything my unit lost six boys killed 21 wounded we got one veer chakra posthumous we got four sena medals i got the vsm etc and uh, one of her the most terrific videos you know we killed about 45 enemy soldiers and over 140 were wounded on that side pakistan there were two units three northern light infantry and uh, 29 baluch one of the most uh, makar battalion of the pakistan army famous for torturing and killing prisoners and all that they were bashed bashed into submission and uh, one of her the most terrific videos you know we killed about 45 enemy soldiers and over 140 were wounded on that side pakistan there were two units three northern light infantry and uh, 29 baluch one of the most uh, makar battalions of the pakistan army famous for torturing and killing prisoners and all that they were bashed bashed into submission in jammu and kashmir was made as peaceful as a lamb from there they had tried to do ethnic cleansing you know i i followed a policy of command and control attrition i said don't go for the foot soldier the piada i want the commander district commander tehsil commander etc etc uh divisional commander of the pakistani the terrorist groups tanzeebs so we made a list of all top commanders and one by one we started knocking them off they were so shaken up that they decided to teach me a lesson they started attacking the minorities the hindus in that area to start an exodus like had happened from the valley of the pandit and people started fleeing because they killed went to one village killed five went to another village killed eight Finally, they went to Gulabgarh village, killed thirty, mostly women and children, oh. and an exodus started. So now I had very little troops to cover the whole area, eleven thousand square kilometers of the toughest mountain terrain. I can't go and protect every village. I had just three thousand troops. So even if I put one man to a kilometer, two thirds of the area would be khali. So he would kill here, then I would go. go there he would kill somewhere else and kill somewhere else so it was a cat and mouse game so i said this is not the way to do it i said let's adopt an offensive policy i went to the village where they had killed last 13 and i started cordon search operations till the locals came with their folded hands ki saab please humko chhod do and all that so i said who did it all i want to know is who did it so they told me finally it is abu mustafa abu gulam abu umair of the lashkar e taiba and these are the two gujjar guys i said forget it i told my boys forget the rest go for these guys and let it be known we are coming for you and when we get you we will give you the most horrible death possible we'll burn you to death for what you have done against women and children unarmed women and children and the word spread around and they were in panic that's what i want to So when you are in panic, you make mistakes. So we put them under panic, and ultimately we tracked them down in the middle of the Tanta forest. There was a clearing where they were staying in a Gujar hut, and we surrounded. We had lots of casualties, but ultimately I told my boys use the Russian thermobaric flamethrower. I authorized use of that, so they hit that thing. They were burned to ash. you could only recognize them by some bones and the kalashnikov rifle where the barrel had bent into a u can you imagine how hot it was you know they died a miserable bloody death so we took photographs and we went to all the villages where they had done the killing we took the powerpoint projector and a screen assembled the people in the local school and showed them this is what happens if you kill innocent women children old and the infirm because the quran sharif the holy book forbids 
killing of women and children and the old and the infirm, even in a jihad. That you've done this, you violated the Quran Sharif. This is the punishment of the Lord. Believe you me, that was September 2001. Till very recently, there were no killings in that area. Oh. And all those who had fled came back. I wish the same thing had been done in uh, the valley. The pundits would not have been out, five lakhs of them, in the refugee camps of Delhi and Jammu. You see? So that was a very successful tenure. I got my Sena medal there and uh, as a brigadier because I led most of the operations from the bloody front. I did five helibone operations, went into deep areas to get that recover some missiles that had reached that very place and, and all that. And then my final tenure was as general officer commanding Romeo Force in Rajauri and Punch. And that was the worst area when I took over. It became the quietest area by the time I had left. Once again, record number of top militants finished. That policy of command and control attrition. Go for the leadership. Don't go for the foot soldiers. Go for the leadership that worked. And uh, then, of course, I finally bowed out of service as I have been an instructor in the Indian Military Academy. I have been an instructor at the Staff College. I have been an instructor in the National Defense College where brigadiers, commodores, and air commodores get their final dose of education from the military. So, it has been a very satisfying life. If I had my life all over again, I would again go to the armed forces. There's nothing like that, nothing like the quality of life, the camaraderie, the close bonds that you forge with your cosmates, with the guys in your unit. Even today, in my retirement, almost, uh, I retired in 2008, so it's almost getting close to two decades since I retired. Almost every second day, my Subhadar Major rings me up, my boys ring me up on New Year, Makar Sakranti, festival, raising day. And that is because of what I have earned in terms of love and respect. Wait, sir. Wait, wait. They, they are not getting any ACRs from me now. Wait, sir. 20 years before I stopped writing ACR. Sure, but sure. yet their bonds are there. They still call me, they meet me, they touch my feet because I led them in battle. Wait, wait sir. I was able to, I hopefully, save lives and win battles. That's your job. We are here to win war. We are not here for draws. We are not here to lay down our bloody arms. We are here to fight and to win and to see that the enemy is surrounded. Right, sir. So, so uh, along with me, sir, a lot of, I mean, last couple of questions, a lot of youngsters are there. They are, most of them I, I are have to go on TV next, so I think we'll have to, just one last so, question. One uh, last uh, message to all these youngsters, sir, because many of them say, कि जब भी हम देश के बारे में बात करते हैं बहुत सारे लोग आजकल ऐसे नए-नए लोग हैं जो यू नो अ फैशनेबल यूनिवर्सिटीज वगैरह में हु अपोजेस आर नेशनलिज्म सो एनी एडवाइस टू ऑल दिस यंग सर लुक आई आई लेट मी बी वेरी ब्लड वी वर टोल्ड दैट इन जेन्यू द स्टूडेंट्स डोंट वांट द नेशनल फ्लैग बिकॉज़ दे से इट इज जिंगोइस्टिक इट इज दिस थिंग नेशनलिज्म इज wrong and this and that. So, I along with a few of my, you know, batchmates, we went to the vice chancellor. And I, we told him, Ki, sir, we hear that there are some students in your uh, university who feel that the Indian tricolor must not fly in the JNU campus. We want to understand, is it a different sovereign country? It's not part of the sovereign territory of India. We, this is not correct. He says, no, no, I agree with you. And I said, sir, no, not just that, that you fly the flag. We will come here, the village of Chhatarpur. The children there have stitched together a 2,500 foot long Indian tricolor flag. We will come carrying that flag. We would request you to help us take that flag through your whole JNU campus. We will march around the whole JNU campus with that flag, right? He says, General, not only you please come to our campus, I will receive you at the gate and help you carry that 2,500 foot flag. So, people told me, General, why are you going? 
there are all sorts of rowdies and gundas in the damn campus, leftist gundas, communist coups. What if they throw a stone at you? What if they do? What if they attack you? You know, even though I mean you are now retired, but it will be a two-star general getting hit, etc. Is, is bad news. It's it's not good for us. You know. So I said, like hell, if we did, uh, we did, uh, you know, uh, stay back because of bullets and bombs and guns and shells. I'm not going to let a bunch of communist goons, you know, scare me from entering that campus. So we went. And we took some of our retired boys, Khalsas and Jat, wrestlers and boxers, <laughs> and went into the temple. And when they saw these huge Khalsas and the huge Jats can be quite big, you know. So <laughs> they not only stayed well off from that district, you know, they were climbed trees two, three hundred feet away and they were watching from there. <laughs> they did not dare come close to that. Whole, you know, Chhatarpur Gaon ke ladke jats, they are also jats, and then our ex-servicemen who were with us, and it was such a successful march. The VC, the entire campus faculty, they came to receive us, and we went round the whole of JNU, which has become something like a, a flagship of sedition, an anti-national activity. So take the battle to the enemy's fort, enter his fort. There, I keep telling people, I go around schools and colleges lecturing to the young to join the armed forces. And I tell them that the armed forces have just four values. CCTV, you know, closed circuit television. So, triple C and TV. These are the four values that I talk of. The first value is country. Your country comes first, always and every time. The men you command come next. Your own ease, comfort and safety come last, always and every time. There is no higher value than the country for a soldier. It is his all. It is his God. It is not a piece of land. It is an emotion for which he can kill and be killed. But he will not flinch. The greatest value is we all have it in our heart. As our country, we will never go wrong. We will never go wrong. Country. Second value, courage. And along with courage, you dar gaya, to mar gaya. That is my experience of the battlefield. If you are scared, you invite a bullet. You draw the bullet to yourself. Okay? And those who go laughing, come back laughing. Those who go crying, die. Okay? That's my experience of the battlefield. And not one. I have been in several. So, country, courage, compassion. Along with this, a soldier has compassion. For the women, the children, the old, the sick, the wounded, of whatever country, he has compassion. He doesn't rape. He doesn't uh, hit old people. He doesn't hit the disabled. Okay? He has got that compassion in him. And the last value is truth. Help us, O oh God, help us to do the harder right instead of the easier wrong. That is the NDA prayer every morning recited by the cadets. Mm. Oh God, help us to be mentally strong, phys uh, physically strong, mentally awake and morally straight, that in doing our duty to thee and to our country, we may keep the honor of the services untarnished. Strengthen us to guard our country against external aggression and internal disorder. This is the NDA prayer. Help us to choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong. Help us to speak the truth. Thank My you, greetings and best wishes to you for the year 1922. I hope all your dreams come true in the year ahead. Those who want to join the armed forces, let me tell you, you can aspire to no better and greater career than the armed forces of India. Defending your country, defending its honor and living a great life of camaraderie, friendship, High value, high ideal. Live with every day. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind, sir.